Hello everybody and welcome to my Minecraft tutorial. This is the third in a series on modular design with Roman buildings and basically in this one we're going to be talking about a villa. And villas are... they're kind of... I suppose they're, they're often misunderstood. Basically they're kind of a mixture between a farmhouse and a palace. <laughs> um, is the kind of the most simplistic description of them. Um, you know, you basically say you've served your, uh, your whatever, 20 years in the Roman Legion and you you retired a, a centurion, you don't just get given a, a big retirement scheme, you, you get given the opportunity to kind of make some money for yourself, so you get given a, you know, attractive land where you can build your own villa, and, you know, basically you can use that to, I suppose, rule over the local peasants, not necessarily rule, but, you know, hire in local workers, till the land, and get some money from that, as opposed to, you know, just getting a, uh, a big bonus when you retire. Um, so villas have a couple of key features which I'll talk about in a bit, um, but for now let's get started on the tutorial. So as this is modular design, I'm still using the uh, the chunk system as a kind of standard unit, um, but this is going to be two chunks, so it's going to be 16 by 32, and uh, basically in this kind of I suppose just as for the uh, for the tutorial, I've laid out the edges and the corners with um, with sponges just for something a bit kind of clear. Um, just so you can see, in your own world, if you're building this, you can uh, you can mark out the corners yourself, or you can eyeball it. But with kind of with a bigger building, it's always handy to kind of mark it out beforehand, and um, so that gives you a sort of better idea. So if we take this to be the front, so say this is the plot here, these four, and um, um, this is the front. Basically, we're going to start at the back, and um, <laughs> because you know you should never do something the straightforward way, and. Um, so basically we're going to lay out these pillars, and the way you do this is pretty simple, it's just a double slab with some stone, smooth stone on top. Um, again, you can mix and match the materials as you see fit, but uh, basically you're going to lay this kind of pattern, which is starting in the corner, you're going to stick one pillar, which is two high on top, so three high total I should say, and skip four, add another pillar, skip four, add another. And do the same along this back wall, but it's going to be four pillars total, with uh, blocks of four in between. Then you come in and chuck in some wooden pillars, and these are going to support a roof, as you'll see later. Um, but basically, these are going to be a gap of three between the wall and uh, and where it's placed. And basically, you only need to lay one on this side and two on this side. So hopefully that's easy enough to follow. <laughs> but yeah, so let's just move on to the next phase. Okay, so in this phase, what we've done is filled in the outer walls with sandstone. And uh, basically just started on chucking on a roof. And this is going to be kind of, it's going to form a sort of courtyard thing later. Um, but the way you want to do the roof is put some half slabs. These are uh, these are actually normal red brick, but my texture pack makes them look a bit funny and grey. Or brown, whichever. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to lay a half slab on top of where the outer wall lies. And then coming in from that, just a full brick. And uh, that gives kind of a... I suppose a, a nice kind of slope to the gable, um, you know, gives it a, a kind of more even peak. And then uh, just alternate down between half slabs and full bricks, and it should line up nicely with the uh, with the wooden pillars. You should be able to walk under them. Um, optionally, you can add some half slabs on the inside just to kind of give a more gradual slope underneath, but it's, uh, it's up to you. I didn't bother in this, um, just because I like a bit more headroom, but it does give a nicer slope if you do. So, yeah, your call. In this next phase, we laid more pillars. And um, basically, um, this first one is a gap of four, but you can see it's over the uh, the corner of the plot. Um, and this one's only going to be two high total, so just chuck one slab, or sorry, one uh, one smooth stone on top of the double slabs. Um, skip two, make another. And then you're going to repeat a pattern of skipping two and adding pillars. And basically, you can kind of see the arrangement here. The first two are only two high, and the rest of them are three high. And there's six total. Um, so, you know, <laughs> a picture paints a thousand words, so it's, it's just a lot easier if you just watch the video rather than me trying to explain it. It's, it's uh, yeah. I'll, I'll just move on, because I'm just going to end up confusing everyone. Okay, so this next phase, we filled in the, uh, the outer wall with sandstone. We've also laid four more pillars. And basically, these are going to be copies of the ones that are in the outer wall, but you're going to skip four and add them in there. And so just four pillars that are all three high. In this next phase, we filled in all the gaps in the pillars with sandstone. Um, you will be putting in doors and windows later, so you can chuck those in now if you want, but uh, I just find for 
for clarity and sanity's sake, it's uh, it's easier if I just fill in the walls and then add them in later. Then on top of these pillars, you're going to put a uh, a ring of double slabs and fill in the center with planks. And um, I've left space for a staircase here, but you can put in the staircase wherever you like later on, um, depending on how you kind of want the room to look. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that phase. In this next phase, we've added a small roof over the lower part of the structure. So uh, we're joined onto this pillar. You can see it pretty much. It's the same as normal Roman roofs. It uh, alternates between half slabs and full bricks, um, as you can kind of see there. And basically, it uh, it joins onto this roof here, so that it's a nice kind of seamless finish. Um, and this is just kind of a, a small sort of storage type area. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a. Uh, it's a little hard to to uh, to chuck it in and to figure it out, but it's. I don't know, well, it, it, it's actually not too hard. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, anyway, so for the inner courtyard, I've laid a floor of cobble, but it's up to you what you want to put in here. Um, and then along the outside, between the uh, the wooden pillars, i put in double slabs, and this is just to kind of give a nice border to the uh, the courtyard. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that phase. In this next phase, I've added on a second story to the uh, the front building. And basically, I, I, just, I put it all in at once because it's basically the same as the first floor, except it's only two blocks high. Um, so the pillars are going to be the, the exact same locations as the ones on the ground floor. And then the roof itself is pretty much the same. It's, say, put a ring around of half slabs. Ooh, that was weird. Oh, it's because that's a... <laughs> it's acting like a cave, so it's giving me weird sounds. Anyway, um, yeah, so put a ring of half slabs around. Then inside that, put a ring of full bricks. And then inside that, put another ring of half slabs. And the way you're going to want to place these on top is just chuck in a full brick and then basically fill it out from there. Okay, so in this next phase, if you remember rightly, the corners of the plot were here and over there. Basically, we're going to come to the far side of it and lay out uh, eight pillars like this. And basically, there's it's a pretty uniform layout. There's a gap of four between each. This is the corner of the plot here, just in case you're wondering. Um, there's a gap of four between each pillar. And they get laid out in kind of a grid. And each pillar is going to be six high total. So it's going to be a double slab and then five smooth stone on top. And um, so yeah, that's it for that phase. And it's because, you know, if you've marked out the corner of the plot, it just it makes it a lot easier rather than having to count out everything. So um yeah, that's it for that phase. In this next phase I've filled in the walls with sandstone and then um in the gables I've just put on two extra blocks of sandstone and this just gives a uh I suppose it's just easier to do it now than to do it later. I've also laid a floor of wood, but uh you can choose whatever you want. You can maybe put some wool in to look like tiles or you know, alternate between maybe double slabs and mossy stone, depending on your texture pack and how it's going to look. Uh, but I've just gone with planks for now, just to keep it simple. Okay, so in this next phase, what we're going to do is fill in the, uh, I suppose, the, the gap between the two sections. Um, you can fill it in, again, with whatever floor material you want. In this case, I've used stone bricks to kind of be, uh, I suppose, flagstone type material. Um, but just bear in mind, at the very front of the plot, you're going to put a row of sandstone because it's going to be a front wall later on. And then the uh, the arrangement of the pillars is actually wrong here, so I'll place them for you now. Um, I kind of <laughs> I got it a bit wrong during the uh, during the tutorial while I was making all this. So um, just let me fix this now. It'll actually probably be easier to uh, to explain it as I go as well. And um, so I'll just fill in these gaps in the bottom. And just give me one sec. Okay, so basically you're going to skip one here from the edge of the plot. Um, you can kind of you can do the edge of the pillars as you like. Um, alternatively, you can maybe put some kind of dirt around here and make it form into grass, so it looks kind of a it looks like it blends into the terrain. Um, but basically, the formula for the pillars is just you're going to skip one here and skip one on this side. And then if we come in to here, oh no, that's not right. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. So skip one, skip two, and that's the kind of formula. Um, and then basically this, the interior of this building, um, this future building I should say, is going to be five blocks in thickness. So I'll chuck some double slabs here to show you where the uh, the pillars are going to go. Then you're going to skip four from this block. So I think that's skipping four there. <laughs> and then skip three and you should be at the edge of the block. And what I like to do here is just put the pillars one lower so that when you're coming from this side, it uh, it kind of blends in nicely. 
Um, so that's a very roundabout way of explaining everything, but uh, let me skip on to the next phase. So yeah, one of the things I should have mentioned actually before I skipped on is um, that these pillars are going to be three high total, um, whereas these two are only going to be two high. Um, so it's easier to kind of make out in the next phase, but just for now, that's uh, something to bear in mind. So yeah, let's move on. Okay, so I fill in the walls of this kind of small section with sandstone. And then for this tall section, it's pretty much the same thing. But these are going to be the same kind of room on the inside, so leave a gap between these two pillars. Um, in front I have left space for a door, um, but basically just fill everything in with sandstone. Then on top of these pillars, you're going to put a, uh, not quite a ring, but a, uh, a border of double slabs, and then fill in the rest with planks. Um, and this kind of gives a nicer effect later. So yeah, in this next phase I've added a floor, as well as the upper, or, sorry, upper story I should say, um, just to avoid confusion. <laughs> Um, and the pillars are on the corners in this case, so comparing it to the last time, you can kind of see that the uh, the whole thing is slightly stepped in a bit. Um, so fill in the walls with sandstone, put on a wooden floor, and then for this section, it's pretty much the same as all the other roofs. It's just alternating between half slabs and full bricks. But uh, the way you want to do it is build it up against this wall. So say put it in a kind of C sort of shape in. Uh, in half bricks, then come in with full bricks, then half bricks again. Um, so that's pretty much it for that phase. Moving on, you can see I've added a roof to this second story. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> I suppose that, that's about it. I've also added in the front wall, um, which is basically, remember we put down the, uh, the layer of half slabs earlier, sorry, not half slabs, sandstone earlier. Um, then come up on the sides with sandstone as well and then put in logs, um, any logs you want, whatever looks best in your texture pack. Put some half slabs, half brick slabs I should say, on the top. And then um, the way you want to do the gate is basically just put a stair on either side. And then this next bit is a bit finicky because you want to use upside down slabs. So basically just put in some temporary bricks across the top. And then if I just grab some slabs here, that's wood. <laughs> that's brick. Um, so just chuck them on the bottom and then get rid of the top ones and that gives kind of a nice, I don't know, gate-like effect is probably the best word for it. Um, so that's pretty much it for the basic construction, so let's move on to the furnishing and details. So yeah, as I said earlier, I kind of, um, I suppose I didn't put in windows and doors as I was going on and the reason for this is that it's, I suppose it's just find what combination of doors and windows suits your terrain best is kind of the best advice I can give because um, again with the Roman buildings, not too many windows on the ground floor uh, facing the outside. But um, you know, if it's in a kind of secluded enough area, then you probably find some. Um, basically, the kind of the furnishings of each individual building are pretty much up to you. As I said before, um, the villas are kind of farmhouses. So in this case, I've kind of whoop, I've opted for a very farmy effect, um, and this kind of egg building is sort of a granary slash storeroom. Um, so just some simple crates made with trap doors and I think wooden planks behind those, yeah. Um, and plenty of chests and stuff as kind of a storage area. There's a little shelf there which is just a fence gate and a trap door. Um, alternatively, if you wanted kind of say a more palatial type place, you could have this as say your slaves quarters. So maybe the bottom floor would be a kitchen slash service area and then the top floor might be beds. Um, but it's really up to you how you want to furnish it. And there's several things you can do with the courtyard. Um, you can maybe instead of using cobble, use grass here, and uh, put in a couple of trees, and maybe stick in a little pool for like a fountain thing, or you know maybe stick in an actual fountain by building the whole thing up. Um, in the transition between this lower courtyard and this upper one, and um, what I've basically done is chucked in some stone brick stairs as well as some double slabs to kind of I suppose give it a bit of a border, as well as chucking in some fence posts and um, just. You know, as kind of a, a minor detail. This long, thin building at the end, I've used as a dining hall. Um, I did originally have paintings on the walls, but they seem to have disappeared. Um, so, let's, uh, let's try and get those back. Paintings. Um, if you don't know about placing paintings, basically, if you want to get a big one, you need a big wall space, and you want to get a block on the lower left, I suppose. And uh, just keep placing it until you get the one you want. I'll go up a bit higher and try and get that one again. Okay, well, that's not what I was looking for, but you get the idea. <laughs> and I can do the same over here. I had some nice tapestries earlier. I don't know what happened to them. 
Ah, uh, now I'm just messing up with the building. Um, anyway, so yeah, this kind of inner room is a big dining hall. Um, I did have tapestries on the wall, as I said, but they seem to have disappeared, which kind of brightened up the place a lot. I've added in big glass windows here, because this is kind of a, a room for entertaining guests, more so than anything, so, you know, you do want your best stuff on display. Um, to this kind of half of the hall, I've added an upstairs, just small kind of sleeping area, and this would more than likely be for slaves, uh, just so they're never kind of out of reach. There's also a little kind of servant's entrance here, um, just for bringing stuff in and out. Um, yeah, the way I did the stairs was pretty simple. It's just ordinary stairs, so there's not much to explain there. Um, and if we come out over to the sort of main living quarters, you can see on the ground floor in this kind of annex area, I've added a kitchen type of area. I haven't done too much with the furnishings. As I said, it's up to you um, how you want your building to kind of work. I've added a chimney spout to the top. Um, again, with the sort of same designs I used on the medieval buildings. It's not really, strictly speaking, Roman. Uh, or Romanesque, but I think it's it's instantly recognizable as a chimney, so you know, it's just something to go with, and that's directly about the furnaces, so it's going for a kind of realistic look. Upstairs here is just a very small bedroom, and with some nice glass panes for the private areas. And um, yeah, that's basically it. It's, uh, it's I suppose I, I kind of I have left this vague at some points because you know it's it's something you should customize to your own tastes. And, if you want to live in one of these on creative, then that's fine. Uh, but you know, if you want a, a proper house on survival, this is a good one to go with because it's it's big enough. It's got enough space for storage, and uh, you know, it's also got the living quarters, and it's you know, it's divided up nicely as well. And plenty of options for customization in terms of like the floors. You could maybe put a sort of mosaic design here if you wanted. And um, you know, again, put in a little garden if you want. Maybe some small crops. Um, although the idea of having a farmhouse, I guess, is to uh, have all your crops outside and then have a central location to bring them all to. But, um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for now. So, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Alrighty, so I just wanted to uh, do a brief fly around the uh, the server while I, uh, while I talked about what's coming up next. Basically, um one of, ooh, that's interesting, sorry, um, yeah, basically, uh, next episode is going to be all about infrastructure, so it sounds boring in principle, but just, you know, hear me out, <laughs> basically, we're going to be doing a lot of roads, and uh, I suppose infrastructure in terms of water and aqueducts, and so that's a bit more exciting, and viaducts, which are basically like aqueducts, but they're just big-ass bridges, and um, so yeah, that's kind of what's coming up in the next episode. I also want to talk about the Let's Play. Um, so I'm still kind of negotiating with people about that. So hopefully it's it's still going ahead. We did a lot of recording, but uh, I screwed up and lost the footage. So I, I've pissed people off. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so hopefully it's coming up very soon. Um, so yeah, I'm just flying around here. I, I, I get so little time. I mean, this is literally the first time I've been on the server. So I, I might be pleasantly surprised by something on here. Um so yeah that's uh that's basically it for this episode so thanks for watching everyone i was going to say something else but i seem to have forgotten what it was at the moment so apologies for that um if i remember before it's uploaded i'll, I'll, I'll chuck it in the description um so yeah i guess that's all for now folks so um thank you very much for watching and i'll see you soon bye